bowl. The Salem Inn, a hotel made up of three houses in the heart of Salem, Massachusetts, has been providing a historically immersive lodging experience since 1983. Now, the Salem Inn is flooded with sounds of renovation as innkeepers Dick and Diane Pabick prepare their centuries-old hotel to fight the modern problem of climate change. Yeah, the mayor was very happy when she heard we were doing this. Because we have a sustainability committee in the city of Salem now. We care about the environment, we care about our people. The Salem Inn is certainly not alone. More and more hotels are fighting climate change because the fate of the hospitality industry depends on it. Many hotels are located on coastal cities like Boston. And as sea levels rise, climate change poses a real threat to these businesses. The hospitality industry is projected to grow after the COVID-19 pandemic halted tourism for two years. To avoid increased carbon emissions from the industry's expansion, the Sustainable Hospitality Alliance reports that all hotels need to reduce their carbon emissions by two-thirds per room within the next eight years. So if you're looking to support environmentally conscious businesses while reducing your own carbon footprint, choosing a sustainable hotel is one way to go. Dan Rubin, a green tourism activist and professor of sustainable hospitality at several institutions, explained what hotels can do to reduce their carbon footprint. The most direct way that hotels contribute to climate change is by burning fossil fuels for heating, for cooling, for cooking, for hot water. We have to get to zero. We have to stop using fossil fuel altogether. All industries and all people have to go green. We have to be more environmentally sustainable, much more environmentally sustainable, because climate change is on track to devastate the lives of our young people within their lifetime. The Pabics are working to become eco-friendly by eliminating their use of fossil fuels. To do this, they're replacing the hotel's oil furnaces and radiators with sustainable heat pumps. Dick Pabick said watching the sea level rise from his home in Salem's Winter Island made the couple realize climate change is more pressing than ever before. The high tide mark kept coming up closer and closer until three years ago when we had a storm there and the waves were crashing up over the seawall onto our front lawn. And they were uh, taking out all the plantings that we had that had been there for 25 years. And we said to each other, this is real. We gotta, we gotta do, play our part in, in trying to do whatever small thing we can do to try to change that. Experts and hoteliers in surrounding areas are starting to do their part, knowing every industry needs to address the problem. This is a, by nature, a wasteful industry, and it involves a lot of people. In the city of Boston, um, at least before COVID, uh, every day there were 30 or 50,000 people staying in hotels. The food doesn't run out. They try to be very generous in your home, you might wear a sweater and, uh, and keep the temperature low, but in hotels, they want the temperature perfect for you. Making an effort to reduce carbon footprints is important for all industries, and Ruben explained what this means for hoteliers. Hotels and every industry and every household needs to look at all they consume uh, and say, how could we consume less? How could we have better practices that reduce our greenhouse gas emissions? Reducing energy, water, waste, and toxins is, is uh, are, are the main criteria. Rubin continued to explain the potential consequences if industries fail to make the changes necessary to combat climate change. For Boston, a city located on the Atlantic coast, rising sea levels caused by warming temperatures poses a unique threat to local livelihoods. The city of Boston has billions of dollars of buildings on its coastline. It has industries on its coastline. It has infrastructure, subways and roads on its coastline. When the sea is several feet higher than it is now, which will certainly happen if we don't address climate change very seriously and immediately, 
then we face a calamity. Where are those people supposed to go? Located right on Boston's waterfront is the Seaport Hotel, an institution recognized as the best green hotel in the Northeast by North Star Meetings Group, a company that awards excellence in the hospitality industry. Through its environmental program called Seaport Saves, the hotel is working to give back to its community through beekeeping and other activities. We started about 13 years ago when we heard about colony collapse disorder and uh, part of our green program in trying to make sure that we recycle food, uh, recycle trash, buy local, uh, we found the opportunity to introduce bees in the seaport district without affecting a neighborhood. Climate change impacts bees' ability to pollinate plants. This results in colony collapse disorder, which is when bees abandon their hive, causing it to die. But Medrano said the Seaport Hotel is fighting against the disorder by becoming home to over one million bees. They live in artificial hives on the roof deck of the building's fifth floor. As a result, the hotel is able to use organic honey in their restaurants, cafes, and bars while informing their guests about the importance of bees through tours of the site. Bees are the best pollinators overall for all kinds of plants, trees, vegetables. Having the bees is really an essential part of the ecosystem for the entire operation on how we live. We want to educate the public on how important they are to all of us. While beekeeping is a meaningful and delicious way to give back to the environment, Lori Howe, Director of Communications at the Seaport Hotel, explained the long list of sustainability efforts the establishment has taken since opening in 1998. A couple years following our opening, we actually had a client come to us and said, we really want to do business with you, but how can you be more environmentally conscientious? And so that got us thinking. And so from there, we started our Seaport Saves program. Seaport Saves incorporates environmentally friendly practices inside individual guest rooms and across the property as a whole. We also opened the doors with a in-room recycling program which allowed guests to recycle bottles, cans, paper right in their guest room. We also shifted from the small containers of shampoo and conditioner that you typically find in a hotel guest room and we moved to larger pump dispensers that are on the actual shower walls and that saves millions of pieces of plastic from a landfill or a recycling center just by making that switch alone. Howe explained that the Seaport Hotel also utilizes green roofs, which naturally moderates building temperature and reduces air pollution through sedum, a flowering plant that improves air quality and attracts pollination from bees. Some efforts the Seaport Hotel takes to reduce its carbon footprint, like using energy-efficient light bulbs, may not be noticeable at first glance. Yet Rubin explained that sometimes it is the least obvious practices that make the biggest impact. Up until five years ago, most hotels didn't have LED lights. Uh, LED lights have reduced the energy uh, from the old incandescent lights by about 85%. So just by changing light bulbs, hotels make a huge difference. On the other side of the Charles River is another hotel cognizant of their carbon footprint. Located in Cambridge, the Irving House at Harvard prioritizes the environment through roof solar panels, recycling, composting, reusable straws, and communal fridges. Rachel Solom, the president of Irving House Corporation, says she hopes the hotel's staff and guests will incorporate their eco-friendly practices into their everyday lives. This will combat the wasteful nature of the hospitality industry while allowing people to do their part to fight climate change. My employees who are coming here from places where they haven't really learned about best environmental practices are learning them here and taking them home. Even though the hospitality business in general generates a lot of waste, I'm, I feel like I'm fighting those, <laughs> those conditions. And I want to. I mean, I really do want to. Solom said making hospitality more sustainable is a group effort and guests and hotel staff members alike need to work together to make a difference. I think if all hotels really took this seriously, there could be some little bite taken out of the big nasty picture. Ruben said hotels like the Salem Inn, Seaport Hotel, and Irving House are part of a movement he dubs the Green Hotel Revolution. And he's optimistic more hoteliers will join in.
the Green Hotel Revolution is well underway. It's most important to say that a lot of hotel chains take this seriously. They've set goals and they're working with their hotels on achieving those goals. Sadly, we have to go much faster because the, the problem of climate change and other aspects of sustainability and of, of maintaining a sustainable world are uh, pressing. Although Rubin emphasizes the sense of urgency hoteliers and travelers should feel, he also believes sustainable travel and hospitality can be a pleasant process for all involved. There's, there's this gloom and doom that I've talked about, uh, but this is also fun. We have tremendous gains to be made and it's in part a, uh, a very satisfying process. I think there's every reason to move in the direction of sustainability and let's make it enjoyable and satisfying to do that.